Today I'd like to show you how to use the lazy load feature in Highs. This is basically the same as the feature in Contact uh, called Purge Until Played and it's used in other samplers as well. So I've got a project here and you can see it's using 118 megabytes of RAM. So I've got a selection of drum samples here and the same in this sampler as well. So two samplers, loads of uh, drum samples and there's actually six mic positions as well. You can see the routing matrix is quite large there. So it's using up quite a bit of RAM and it'd be nice if we could reduce this RAM usage. So one way to do that of course is to change the sampler's uh, preload and buffer settings but another way is to purge the samples so we can select so we could purge individual mic channels or we could just purge all of them and then we can see the RAM usage drops and then we can load them again. But what I discovered recently is Hyze has this feature called lazy load which is purge until played and it's in this menu where we have the purge all we can go down to this one lazy load and if we do the same for the second sampler lazy load and you can see now we're at zero megabytes of ram and this is great this means people can load up your instrument and it won't use any ram until they actually trigger one of the samples so if i play one of the samples now you can see it loads a little bit of ram play a different sample loads a bit more ram loads a bit more so we're nowhere near that 118 and it's great for users because it means if they're using your instrument but not necessarily using every single sample in that instrument then they can save a ton of ram and use that for other things so i'm going to show you how we can add a button to our ui to enable or disable this uh, lazy load feature for all of the samplers in your project in one go so the first thing we're going to do is add a button and we'll change the text of this to lazy load. And we'll change the name to BTN lazy load. And we're going to right click on that and create a custom callback definition. And we'll just paste that in here. So that's uh, BTN lazy load. Okay, the next thing we need to do is get a reference to all of our samplers. So we're going to start by getting the sampler IDs into an array, and we'll do that using the function synth.getIDList and pass in the string sampler. And this gives us an array that contains the IDs of all of the samplers in our project. So if we print this out, we'll see sampler one and two are inside our array. Okay, now we're going to make a new array called samplers. And then we're going to populate this samplers array with a reference to each of the samplers. And we do that by looping through our sampler IDs and then grabbing the reference to the samplers. So we'll have uh, for ID in sampler IDs, samplers.push synth.getsampler ID. So now we've got an array that contains all of the samplers in our project. Okay, now we can add our logic to our button. And what we'll actually do is we'll just call a function from here. We'll call it set lazy load state. And we'll pass in the value of our button. And the reason I like to do it by calling a function, and don't worry about that error, that's just because we haven't defined this function yet. The reason I like to do it with a function is it means we can also call this function from other places. Okay, so let's write this function. Okay, so basically what we want to do is we want to loop through all of our samplers. And then we want to set the property of our sampler, the purged property, to either zero, so no purging, or two. And that property, let's just double check what it's called. We'll go to the module browser. We'll have a look. And yeah, it's this one here, purged. So that's the attribute we're going to set. If value. So that means if lazy load is enabled, we can do s. And s is our sampler here. Dot set attribute s dot purged two. Else. s.set attribute 
s.purged zero. Okay, so to test this, we can turn our button on and RAM should be zero, which it already was. And we can turn it off and it should load, uh, but it isn't. And I think the reason for this is, um, I, th I think it's like a weird glitchy thing in highs. Basically we're doing s.purged, which is sampler.purged. But I think we have to actually get the sampler as a child synth rather than as a sampler. So we'll just try this, get child synth. And now it's at 118. Press the button to lazy load and it goes to zero. Unpress it and it loads the RAM. So yeah, for some reason we have to do it as get child synth rather than get sampler. I'm not 100% sure why that is. Okay, and we can just have a look in here as well. So we can see the option is currently set to disabled. So we're using all the RAM and we enable it and we get lazy load there and the RAM goes to zero. Something else you'll notice is in the mapping editor, when we have lazy load enabled, the samples all show a sort of gray color until we play one of them. And then they start lighting up. If we just purge the samples, then they'd go a red color. So you can tell if it's lazy load or if they're actually purged. And if we turn it off, they just go full white. Okay, so that's how you add a button to your UI to control the lazy load feature of multiple samplers at once. And I think if you're making any sample library that's using more than say 50 megabytes of RAM, and maybe even that's a bit much, you should be using the lazy load feature. I know with some other players, when you have lazy load, um, when you play back the first time, you get all sorts of audio dropouts and glitches until the samples are loaded. I haven't experienced that with highs. It could be because I'm using NVMe drives, which are very fast or it could just be that Highs is very quick at loading the samples. Either way, I think if you're doing a library of any sort of significant size, you should add this lazy load feature. I think it's really, really good. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Hope this was helpful. See you next time.